Welcome back to another Breath of the Wild combat video. Today we may be going two-handed, but we're sticking to one topic, and it's the bow spin. Many players have been asking why the strange mechanic is so heavily used by me, and I'll be sharing knowledge on why it's arguably one of the most powerful skills in Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild designed heavy weapons to be damage dealers, and this will push it beyond its limits. I'll teach you how to activate it, its properties while working, why you should use it, and what situations to maximize this best. This was first found by Average Josh in August 2017 as a glitch that caught Breath of the Wild YouTuber Medi's attention and shared it with the world. Most people passed it on as an interesting gimmick with no application in actual fights. That's when I discovered the potential overpowering use in enemy encounters. With lots of testing, the combat effective bow spin was found. Now, let's go over how it works. To start, your main ingredient is any heavy weapon except for the wind cleaver. Hold the attack button down to start spin attacking, and then tap Z, R, and B any time that Link has a handle passed over his head. For those still struggling to see it, here is a hands-on demonstration. Remember that Z, R, and B are tapped at the exact same time. The mechanics of this attack are fairly strange. When it's activated, the biggest change is its attack range. It's dwarfed immensely because the weapon hitbox is true to the weapon itself, meaning when the weapon is sheathed, the hitbox is now actually on your back, not your hands. This makes your attack range very close and vertical. This technique can allow you to hit targets directly below you where it would normally not be possible. On top of that, it also allows you to hit targets directly above you, normally out of reach, while spinning. This technique has most players thinking it doesn't use durability, but it uses it as normal. The ending animation has strange quirks as well. When you first boot the game up and you bow spin, your ending animation will be nothing. Until you do a spin attack or a reverse spin attack with the sword first, the game will copy the animation with the bow and arrow in hand. Unfortunately, none of this really matters since the bow and arrow have no effect on the damage of the bow spin. Instead, it's better to learn cancels to escape if needed by jump cancelling, run cancelling, or B cancelling to escape enemy attacks if threatened. It's also important to note that Urbosa's Fury does not work during bow spins. Finally, the most important part of all of this is that both Great Frostblade and Great Thunderblade retain elemental effect properties during the bow spin but unfortunately, fire does not. Now all of this seems like an annoyance to work with, but in return, you get infinite elemental effect. We're going to first start with the freeze chain. This is withholding that you have enough stamina and durability in your sword, an inescapable loop. This is best to use on one-on-one -on -one fights against freezable enemies. Now most people have gone out after seeing this and immediately tried this, wanting to get this result. This wastes precious durability and stamina chasing down the poor enemy sliding around. To fix this, this harkens back to my very first video where Navi pointed out a very important fact that most people glanced over. The enemy must be down on the ground or in the middle of his wake up animation to prevent being knocked away. On the other side of the coin, if you correctly freeze them during wake up but fail to bow spin, you only get 4 hits before you run out of freezing power, which at that point you'll be most likely tasting dirt. Combining the bow spin with wake up timing is key to a complete freeze chain. Next up, we're going to learn the Thunderdome chain. Each time the Great Thunderblade touches a chest or a water drenched enemy, a shockwave is released, stun locking and damaging multiple enemies in the dome range. The first version is the chest loop. This requires two strange things, an amiibo and a corner. While treasure chests or any unbreakable metallic objects are usable in these loops, they are impractical to simply carry around everywhere just for these purposes, so summoning an amiibo chest makes this much more convenient. Hitting a chest on its own is possible, but not recommended since each hit knocks it slightly away, causing the chain to move away in random directions. Hello. 
Lodging the chest in a corner that won't allow it to move away locks both the enemies and the chest in place. The second version is the Drench Loop. Simply be in the rain, target the highest HP enemy, and hit them with the bow spin. This will cause the same Thunderdome loop effect without the need for a chest. Always target the highest HP enemy for the loop to continue for the longest time. You can get the same effect in good weather by dampening them with a the standard choo-choo jelly, causing them to be drenched as well. This is also extremely valuable in Master Mode, where gold enemies have a natural resistance to lightning stun, but cannot recover quickly enough because of the constant barrage of shockwaves and are trapped in the chain. Between multiple water and metal conductible options, there's almost always a way to create your own Thunderdome chain. Damage calculation is strange as well. There are three factors to damage with an elemental weapon. The base damage is the weapon's normal damage with no power. The elemental charge damage is a tiny bonus stacked when the blade has elemental charge. And the elemental effect damage, which is completely different with each element. What the bow spin does is immediately cancels the elemental charge, but infinitely outputs the elemental effects until the spin is stopped. This ability is why the bow spin is so powerful. I recommend checking out the Breath of the Wild compendium for more in-depth information on how damage is calculated. Finally is potential DPS or damage per second increase through some pretty incredible double hit possibilities. Double hit allows two hits per single spin, doubling your DPS. The most common double hit players know is the Lionel's left front foreleg when stunned, but bow spinning allows easy double hits on a multitude of enemies, previously impossible while normally spinning. DPS is immensely important when you try to maximize damage while they're stunned, and increasing damage per stamina use ratio. This, as you might have guessed, can ultimately be combined to double the DPS of previously shown freeze chains or thunderdome chains to absolutely destroy single or multiple enemies while saving more stamina to spare. Each enemy's double hit location varies, so test out each enemy and find their weak point. While this seems like an insanely powerful skill, the fact that it requires specific weapons with limited durability, heavy stamina requirements, and that doesn't work with every situation and enemy, still makes this a niche technique, and more rewarding to use it when the time is right. Hopefully this guide will help you in future endeavors in your fights against Hyrule's beasts. If you like this video, please like and share, and don't be afraid to comment with questions about this technique, as there were several things that couldn't fit in this video. Either I or a fellow player will help answer to the best of our ability. As one of the last tutorial videos, I want to thank the community for being so supportive of my work, and hopefully we'll see each other again in the next Zelda adventure.